Thanks to RX Bar for supporting the PC Perspective podcast. RX Bar is a whole food protein bar with no BS. Get 25% off your first order at rxbar.com slash pcper and use the promo code pcper. That's rxbar.com slash pcper, promo code pcper. Me, 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 me. You, 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 you. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, guys, welcome to the PC Perspective Podcast. Let me just start by saying, you know that cliche scene in the movies where the team's in the Super Bowl, the underdog team, and their last string quarterback goes down with injury, and Tom Landry looks to the stands and says, you. Well, I'm the guy they find going through the dumpster in the stadium parking lot when that guy says no. I'm Jim Tannis. Welcome to the PC, PC Perspective Podcast, episode 492, being recorded March 21st, 2018. We, yep. say, say Jim Jim Tannis again, and then we'll switch over to the next person. Oh, Jim Tannis again. <laughs> I'm Josh Walworth, and Jeremy's going to be pissed. Uh, it's okay. I was in the dumpster. That's what he was looking for. I'm Jeremy Halstrom. Yep. So as you notice, this is yeah, a we little got one bit... other person here. Oh, we do. Alex, our very Alex, uh, trustworthy yourself. You've got camera a operator. He dug Alex. himself out of a snowstorm. He braved it all. Oh, you are braved muted. it all. I was muted because you don't want to hear me going to Rexford. Yes, we did get a lot of snow here, and we ventured out into the wild winter land. That Dude, you be. got Yamazaki 12? I see Yamazaki 12 back there. Oh. That's not for the lowly people like me. That That's for the boss man. I don't touch that. He doesn't appreciate it. Oh, I appreciate it, but I'm not going to touch it. I'm drinking the cheap stuff. Can't touch <laughs> this. Do, 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 do. Can't touch Yamazaki. Jim, take it over. Okay. So, yes. Yeah, so, so it is a little bit of a different crew tonight. Nobody's here. Uh, Ryan's on a personal trip. Ken, I think, is at GDC. Alan was supposed to be here, but his plane got delayed and then he got sick. So I think he's vomiting in a Delta Airlines flight somewhere over Kansas right now. Uh, so, uh, so this is what you got, and we're going to make a show of it. Uh, so thanks for joining us. We do record every Wednesday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern. Um, you can find the podcast if you want to watch live at uh, pcpro.com slash podcast. And if you want to join us uh, in the chat, you can do so there as well. We have a live chat at the site every night. Uh, and again, pardon me as I go through this. I'm not used to hosting this show. Uh, if you want to know when we go live uh, for the podcast or for our special events that we hold on occasion, make sure to join up to our live mailing list. You can do this at pcpro.com slash subscribe. Uh, we use this only to notify you when we're about to, to go live. We don't sell it. We don't use it for marketing. You won't receive anything else through that email except for a notification uh, when, when we're going to have a show, although we forgot to do it tonight. So uh, don't hold that against us. Um, and no, no, Yamazaki for you. Yeah, right. You know, I saw Ryan mixing that with Fresca the other day, so we're gonna have to talk about that. Are you kidding me? Yes, <laughs> he was miss- mixing Yamazaki no, with I'm, Fresca. I'm kidding you. Uh, however, you like you it. Might as, as much well as just it pains go me to say it. on the PA ta. Uh, I, I, Ryan has excellent tastes in alcoholic beverages. Uh, Pour it out, replace it with Jack Daniels, and let him go. Yeah. Well, and if uh, you want to help support the cast so that uh, the organization can hire better people to host when Ryan's not available, you can go to PC or to patreon.com slash PC per and uh, help support us there. I mean, look, the economics of websites has changed, folks. Uh, advertising isn't what it used to. Ad blockers are a thing. Uh, if you like what we do, you want to help us out. Go over there and, and consider uh, checking that out for us. We'd really appreciate it. Now, normally, if you do uh, become a patron or increase your pledge during the show, Ryan gets a notification and he will read out your name or whatever hilarious or uh, disturbing message you put in the name field. We can't do that tonight because those go straight to Ryan. But uh, he's he's but, you know his... he he actually is reading them right yes. now to himself. Yeah. Yes, he's got he's out with his his buddies and he's got his phone. He's so... like, hey guys, 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 with the fifteen people at the table, guess who just yeah. subscribed to our Patreon? Yeah. Exactly, and he has promised me that he will tell whoever he's with what comes through. So this <laughs> is an yeah, yeah, opportunity. Is. <laughs> we, we won't know what's happening here. But please, oh, this is the humanity. time where you have a chance to traumatize Ryan Shroud and his friends. Hey, and if family. this is the gang that I think it is, 
he will definitely be reading them out. Yep. So you have you you have a you have a, a high bar to meet if you're going to do this. You got to really just get get awful, just get awful on that. I mean, take care of that. But yeah, check that out. patreoncom per. Thank you for that. Uh, let's jump into the uh, oh merchandise. Yes, don't, okay. don't forget the merch, man. We do uh, after. Years of requests, we've got Merchandising, merchandising. Exactly. Teespring.com slash store slash PC per. We've got a, an array of t-shirts, everything from the the logo uh, to the Death Wish Raid, Hot Dog Down a Hallway, that's a favorite. Um, a nice little mug, Sweet Sweet Lemonade, all of your favorite slogans from like four or five years ago. We've got them. Uh, fresh to order, and every purchase helps support us. So if you're looking for something like that, check it out uh, over there. All right, moving into some of the content, our weekly mailbag. Uh, this is our weekly Q&A show uh, where somebody, usually Ryan, although Josh uh, and Alan do some shows as well, they take uh, 20 minutes or so every week and they answer your questions. And so uh, last week was Ryan, and he has some good stuff in there about the you know, why are GPUs not socketed like a CPU? Why do we have to buy PCs through middlemen? Like, why can't we just buy straight from the uh, the ODMs? Um, things about questions about upcoming Ryzen processors, the GeForce Partner Program. That's controversial. You know, it's it's so odd that you know so much about these mailbags, Jim. Yes, it is. I stalk I stalk every member of the office. I work really? out of a van in the parking lot. Um, and come on, somebody's got to check those bags for yes. problems. I was wondering who was going through my thongs. Well, I washed them for you, Josh. Um, you really need to work on that. And uh, so anyway, check that out at our website or at the uh, YouTube channel. And we've got a new mailbag coming up uh, on Friday. I think we do, it, we do it every Friday morning. And Josh will be this week. And he is very unhappy right now. So the questions he answers uh, tomorrow for the Friday show will be fun. So don't, uh, don't uh, forget to, to check that out. And if you want to ask a question, leave a comment on the YouTube video or at the website uh, for the uh, post on the video. All right. Moving right into news. Uh, we've got a review from Alan of the My Digital SSD. Uh, now, we're not – Alan was supposed to be here. Like I said, uh, he's, he's uh, ill and delayed. So uh, we're not going to go into too much detail here. We're going to save the, the meat of this for next week when he's uh, going to be able to talk to us about it. But uh, Really? Are we going to save the meat? Because this is honestly actually one that I read because it was interesting. Oh, well, then – by all means, I, I just expected okay. you to be completely okay, unprepared. Fine. This is it's your that, digital SSD, yeah. Josh. Take, take it away, it's Josh. My digital SSD. So here's the thing. It's, uh, it's, it's I think it's got that Fizon controller, right? Right. Right. The, here's the deal. Yeah, correct, sir. Here is the deal, man. The deal is it is two lanes of PCI Express, not four of the standard, you know, what we see in M.2. It's still an M.2. Form factor, but it's only got two lanes. So what two lanes gives you is lower bandwidth, but also lower power. And the Fizon EA controller, it runs at a lower wattage. <clears throat> so you're saying this is a more uh, a more uh, efficient storage thing. And you're mostly right because those things are, you know, they they pull, they sip power. Um, the performance is not shabby, but it's not fantastic because you're giving up half of the bandwidth. And I believe it is still, is it still TLC memory on that thing? Uh, yes. Yeah. And so it's not real fast. Um, you know, it, it does okay throughout the testing. And for the price that you're getting these things for, they're pretty decent, but where you're, you know, again, seeing the best is, is price and power. Uh, say, for instance, the Western Digital Black is going to outperform this, but it's going to be a little bit more expensive. The Samsung 960 Evo, it's going to outperform this quite a bit. See, look at that graph. Look at that sequential read on the Evo versus BPX once. Significantly higher. But you're also going to pay a whole lot more for that 50 to 70 bucks, depending on what day it is. So this is kind of a middle ground. It's to get people into M.2 
and to get pretty good um, densities across the thing. And, uh, you know, it's, it's look, the 512 gig is it at 29 cents a gigabyte. Getting closer to that uh, 10 cents. So this is a, it's, it's a nice product that you will find at 150 at probably the max because that's, that's their kind of MSRP. It can go down sale sometime, maybe after a few months, and you'll get it for less, like everything. But yeah, it's it's cheaper than the 960. It's cheaper than the 860 Evo, which is uh, which is a uh, SATA over M.2. And so you're going to get better performance than the M SATA stuff. Uh, you're going to get better prices than the four lane M.2. And you've got a whole range of uh, of capacities to look at. 128, 256, 512, one terabyte. One terabyte's not horrifically priced. 318, and I imagine you'd find that at 300 to 285 online somewhere after these are released. So uh, this is a nice step up from SATA drives, less expensive than full four by PCIe lanes uh, with M.2. And they've struck kind of a nice balance in, in price and performance. Uh, warranty, five years. That's, that's pretty significant for any kind of drive anymore. And uh, you can see uh, on the thing, the endurance uh, is really good, especially up at the one terabyte. So what, what, 800 terabytes written? It's not terrible. I imagine that's, uh, you know, that's kind of the low end. Um, like when uh, Tech Report went uh, to riding the wind out of all of their SSDs and they found them riding significantly above all of that. But then, you know, they had cells that uh, degraded and finally were taken out of service and replaced by stuff that was uh, you know in the background that were kind of reserve um, so yeah these are probably conservative uh, you know riding numbers anyway I got a gold award Alan seemed to like it uh, you know real really just pay attention to the uh, the market I mean every once in a while those western digital blacks go down around the price of these my digital SSD SBXs so maybe pick one of those up if you see it. But otherwise, it sets a really nice baseline. Uh, they're efficient products. They're pretty fast. They're going to be faster than any SATA drive out there. So keep that in mind when you're looking for new storage. How was that? Was that okay? That was excellent, Josh. No, it sucked because I didn't go into details of the testing like Alan would. And I didn't talk for 30 minutes. But not it, it's testing. not eight o'clock yet, so. Oh, I don't worry about it. No, no, still- nobody, nobody reads any of the details of Alan's articles. They just go straight to the bat, to the end of the uh, article. See the see that gold award, and they know. They yep. know. Gold award. So great choice for a budget M.2 build. Very very cool. And uh, if if Alan feels that Josh's explanation was inadequate, he will fill us in on the on any other details next week. But that sounded pretty good. Uh, Looks like a very interesting product, and and good to see that price competition continuing to drive prices down on M.2. Um, All right. Next up is uh, something I wrote. Uh, This was a a short piece. We got a drive-in from CalDigit. Um, It's the the tough drive uh, for their rugged, uh, you know, outdoor kind of extra durable product line. And when I saw this – if if you've ever used, I think you know, there's a company called Lacie, which kind of markets their products towards Mac users primarily. But they've they've for for years had a, a rugged external hard drive that looks very similar to this. It's a two and a half inch form factor, an orange bumper, uh, and I saw this drive and I thought, oh, this is just a rip off of that. But this is uh, unique in that, in addition to shock and dust protection that the Lacie drive offers, this offers uh, waterproofing. Uh, there's a silicon bumper around the whole thing, and there's a plug that or that uh, closes off the uh, off the uh, sorry 
<laughs> Alex is giving me cues. I need to keep scrolling. I cannot multitask. Uh, so there's a plug that's, that uh, covers the uh, USB-C port. So it's a USB-C drive. It comes in hard drive and solid state options up to uh, two terabytes. And the one we looked at was a two terabyte hard drive model. And uh, it's a nice little drive. And we decided we have to test this. You know, they off they say it's it's for rugged use. It's for people on job sites, photographers hiking mountains and stuff. We got to put this through its paces, um, and so we threw it in a bucket of water. And, and uh, amazingly, action scene. Yeah, and that I made a that was a this is a a this is photographic evidence of me being an idiot because on my desk there I was trying to shoot the picture as well as put the drive in the water. And so I just kind of threw it from behind the camera, and it splashed all over my desk uh, right next to some electronics. Uh, so, so I got a good shot, but it wasn't worth it. get you an assistant. Yes. <laughs> um, so shock protection was fine. We, we threw the drive around. Drives like this that do shock protection, that's not new, and, and it, it, it held up for that. But the submersion test, we put it under there. It, it's supposed to be able to withstand one meter of submersion for up to 30 minutes. We didn't have a container that I could that was big enough for me to put it under one meter of uh, water. So, cause surprisingly, you have a trash can in there, or is it one of the mesh trash cans? We do have trash cans, um, but they were uh, – I wasn't. I didn't have anything to fill them with. And I well, they, were, they were they were full of, of McDonald's wrappers from Alan, right? Well, they were, and I could have emptied them. Um, you could uh, have. Although he did how, go to How many Skyline. meters of ketchup and burger juice? Well, uh, not enough. Close, but not but not enough. Um, and so I, we, we couldn't test the one meter. So I guess you know that 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 needs to be noted. But I did put it in this this plastic drawer full of water, and I left it there because I forgot about it for well over an hour. It was supposed to be you know it's supposed to last half an hour. It was in there for. Close to two hours, I would I would bet, and then I went oh crap and pulled it out, let it dry, and it worked just fine. It's important to note though that that protection isn't intended to be uh, something that you should that that is its normal use. Like you shouldn't go to the pool and toss this underwater and let it hang off the cable and you know just use it underwater. It's more of a safeguard because when I opened it up, uh, there's multiple layers of gaskets and adhesives and things to kind of keep it sealed. Uh, but some water did start to seep in and getting it back together is going to compromise its waterproof uh, characteristics. So this is like a, this is a fail safe. This isn't meant as an intended use case, which I think most people understand, but it needs to be said. Um, but uh, the drive performed fine for a hard drive. Uh, it comes with both USB-C and USB-C to A cables. No difference in those cables. Uh, 130, 140 megabytes per second of uh, sequentials. Uh, so a very nice, fast drive. The only thing is, is it's pricey. Uh, it is uh, significantly priced, uh, or sig priced significantly higher than other two terabyte hard drives, external hard drives. Uh, so you are paying for that uh, protection. The hard drive model at two terabytes is one seventy nine ninety nine. The one terabyte SSD model is four fifty. Uh, if you're just looking for an external drive, you can get like the My Passport for 69 bucks, two terabyte hard drive, My Passport. And then the Lassie that I mentioned that does not have waterproofing but is shock absorbent is at 110 right now. Uh, so it's interesting if, if you're a photographer, if you're a construction manager, you know, so, somewhere where there's going to be environmental hazards, uh, this is something to look into because uh, it, can, it can save your data uh, if, if something happens. If you're going to Mexico and you want to keep it in your pants. Yes. <laughs> How rugged was the case, Jim? Was it was it pretty solid, or was it just sort of like a pretty thin aluminum? Or it was pretty solid. It's it's an aluminum exterior, and it was a pretty pretty solid um, uh, feel. It's got a nice little bit of heft to it. And then these end panels here are plastic. Uh, so, uh, but but there's two layers of them. There's an outer layer that kind of seals it from water, and then if you can peel that off, you see the inner layer. Um, so it's it's. It's pretty well put together. Like I said, I, I have no, no issue uh, believing that it would completely protect you from a single submersion, accidental submersion. Uh, it's just when it gets into being, being hit multiple times, mm. uh, things may start to fall apart there. It's, it's meant, you know, it, it's meant to, to, it's to meant die for, to save your data. 
It's meant for spill protection, not hanging out in a pond. Exactly. Yes. Although it, it could hang out in a pond for a few minutes and you'd be all right. <laughs> uh, so, uh, like I said, not for everybody, but you know, it's, don't buy this if you're going to put it on your desk at your office. You know, just but if you need, need well, that I don't know. On your desk, field. I might want it. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. So there's water flying around there, apparently. A, a little bit. Uh, yes. Um, other other fluids p- potentially, as well. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, that's the uh, Cal Digit Tough external drive. Moving on to, we got a Corsair power supply review from Lee, the Corsair AX1600i. Uh, so this is a beast of a power supply. Now, I believe, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, the Corsair had a 1500 watt prior to this. Was there their maximum uh, capacity? Yeah, I think it was a 1500 MX. Okay. And uh, and I know... Uh, uh, what was that company? Um, EVGA has a sixteen hundred as well yeah. for the consumer desktop. Um, yeah, they don't have a twelve volt rail like this one. Yes, uh, this is quite beefy. Um, thirteen hundred thirty three point three amps on the twelve volt. Yes, you can arc weld. Yes, yes, you can <laughs> uh, off the PCIe slot. And the uh, and and plenty of uh, eight pin uh, PCIe connectors. And six peripheral SATA connectors, lots of options there. The one thing I know Lee really liked too is that it does all this on a 15 amp outlet. You don't yes. need to go to 20 um, to support this uh, this level. And uh, and this says it all right here. Look at all those strengths. No weaknesses. No weaknesses at all. He gives it an editor's choice award. He denied it the gold with all those strengths. I guess. Uh, the editor's, the editor's choice, choice is, is the highest oh. award we have. It's above gold. Silver is the lowest. Gold is the middle. My just just editor's like titanium. choice. Yes, we need a titanium rating for the titanium yeah. power supplies. Because that's sure. better than platinum. Yes. Mm. Uh, I sit corrected. So, you know, if you're building a mining rig, shame on you, but uh, this is something that might help if you're building a really high-end workstation this will provide all the power you need. And it's from Corsair, and they make very good power supplies. I've had uh, personal luck with their supplies for many years. Uh, I know we like them here. I know Lee likes them. Uh, so check that out. You guys got any other uh, thoughts on this? I wish it wasn't fully modular. I do like to see the uh, ATX power plugs being a dedicated plug because when are you not going to use those? Well, I guess just to allow with this you power to draw. I'm sorry? Especially with this power draw, that seems a place where you really, really, really don't want a short to happen. So yeah, yeah, you, maybe you, a, you lose a couple of percent on yeah. on soldering versus well, no, on uh, physical connections versus truly soldered on there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I I like to have the modular option just because I like to use cables that are exactly the length I'm going to need for the build, and that way I don't have any extra extra stuff all folded and stuffed in the back of the case or anything. So for there, but, but yeah, that's, I, that's me going through life. I got all <laughs> kinds of things folded and stuffed into. Yeah. You, you and me both brother, you and me both. <laughs> um, so check that out. The Corsair AX 1600 I 1600 watt power supply. $450. Oh, that's right. We didn't touch on the price. 450. Yeah. That'll make you holler. Mm-hmm. Yep. 449.99. MSRP, though, so maybe you'll find a deal if the miners ever stop buying all the components. All right, well, we're going to take a uh, break right now. We've got our very own Ryan Shrout coming in via satellite or something. I don't know. They've rigged something up, but we're going to take a break to thank our sponsors. So uh, take it away, Ryan. Hey, everybody. Ryan Shrout here stepping in to thank today's podcast sponsor. This would be our new friends at RX Bar. RX Bar is a, a whole food protein bar made with 100% whole ingredients and no BS, as they call it. That means 100% whole ingredients, uh, very few simple, clean ingredients. For example, they talk about uh, using egg whites as a main source of protein. It's also easily digestible. Uh, they'll, they'll ship them to you. We got uh, this 12-pack here to sample it. Um, here I've got one of these peanut butter chocolate ones. It's very, uh, very upfront about what they're giving you uh, for the main ingredients in these uh, bars. Three egg whites, 14 peanuts, two dates, no 
BS. Uh, RX bars are gluten-free, soy-free, dairy-free, no added sugar, no artificial colors, flavors, preservatives, fillers. They are great tasting with a variety of flavors, 11 different flavors, uh, and I have sampled mm, six of them so far. They've all been really good. Uh, I know protein bars typically have a pretty bad rap for understandable reasons. Uh, these are very good, um, and I, I find myself coming in. If I didn't get breakfast at the house, I'll have one here. If I'm leaving for a flight, uh, I'll take one with me or I'll put one in my bag because sometimes you just never know. You won't be able to get to eat lunch when you're on some of these work trips. Um, whether you like sweet, savory, chocolate, or fruit flavors, there is an RX bar option for you. Real food ingredients actually taste really good. Um, like I said, ideal for breakfast, snacks, thrown in the bag, uh, post or uh, pre-workout food items. Um, you can get their offering to our viewers and listeners at least 25% off of their first order at rxbar.com slash PCPer. Use promo code PCPer. That's rxbar.com slash PCPer, promo code PCPer. And we thank them uh, for supporting our podcast, and we hope you check them out. Thanks, guys. Great. Thanks, Ryan, uh, so much for that. And uh, we'll be sure to check out those RX bars. Now, back to the show. Uh, we've got the Logitech uh, uh, G, I'm sorry, G560, and uh, which is a speaker system, and the G513, which is a uh, new keyboard they've got. Uh, the G560 speakers we've actually got sitting on my desk at the back of the office here. I'm uh, doing a review of them right now, so we'll have that up uh, shortly. But basically, these are... Uh, because, of course, they are RGB speakers. Uh, they've got uh, lights built into the back that kind of bounce off your wall if you've got your desk configured where it's next to the wall. And they've got lights on the front that kind of provide a nice little illumination on the desk surface there. And uh, it's a 2.1 system um, with a 120-watt uh, amplifier. And... It connects via USB to your, to your desktop and then to the Logitech gaming software where it provides not just random RGB lighting or custom RGB lighting that you can set statically, but it also does a visualization because as it's running on the system, the Logitech visualizer app can see what's on your screen. It knows the colors of your display. So it allows it to change dynamically with uh, what's happening on your screen. So as you're gaming, you get sort of that effect. And they've had these kind of things for TVs where you kind of run it through an HDMI pass-through and it does, and it mimics the colors in the backdrop. Um, but this is all through USB. Bias lighting yes, rocks. Yes, bi bias lighting, yep. Bias lighting is like the – it's a you, – you're gaming in a dark room. You put bias lighting behind your monitors. And if you've got <clears throat> the color – uh, of what is essentially happening on your screens being projected, not the actual images, just the color. It is so much easier on your eyes. It's 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 really an interesting effect. If you've never experienced it before, it's <clears throat> it's really good. I mean it, it 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 decreases eye strain. It kind of actually increases immersion because you've got. I mean, if you think about your eyes, you've only got one area, you know, like of that big on your screen that you can focus on. Everything else gets blurry. And beyond that, you you tend to notice colors more than you do distinct objects. And so bias lighting is kind of taking advantage of that. And and you if you have an active bias lighting system that does this kind of work, it adds a lot to the experience. You may not initially notice it. But when you take it away, it's like, okay, this is a whole different experience. This is awful. Please bring it back because bias lighting is worth it. Yeah. It's, is it's, it frowned upon if you bring this to a LAN party and point it at the other people? I'm not up on I, the, I could see that working. Yeah. I, I, I'm not up to date on the latest uh, LAN etiquette, but I imagine that that might be a potential use for this kind of product. I wonder though, Josh, like because the, the, normally bias lighting is attached directly to the back of the display. Mm -hmm. I wonder because I and I haven't been able to test the. I'm still doing the audio quality test. We just got it in yesterday, or a few days ago. Uh, yep. But uh, so it'll be interesting to see what the effect of of having the speakers to the side where the light is going to be off 
to the edges and you'll have sort of a dead zone sort of right in the middle of your monitor. So it'll be interesting to see what, you know, how, how that compares to, to display mounted lighting for, for that bias, uh, bias effect. Yeah. That's in a strip that's yeah. behind the thing. Yeah. I don't know. That's uh, a good question. But Someone might have to test that. Yes. I'm, I'll, like I said, I'll take, I'll look into it as soon as I get to that part of the testing. For, from what I've seen though, the lighting effects seem pretty cool in a, just kind of going through the audio section. Cause they just, they, by default, they, they beat to the to the music. It's uh, uh, an audio visualizer effect, um, and they seem pretty accurate, pretty pretty good timing on that. Uh, so that'll be be cool. So be sure to check uh, PCPro.com in the next few days for our review of those. Um, and I believe we also have this keyboard in, although I'm not sure who's on on uh, deck to review this. This is the uh, G513 mechanical gaming keyboard. It's got the Romer switches. Um, and it also has that light sync. So this is just like every other company. Logitech has the uh, their their RGB stuff going through their their gaming app or their, their what do they call it the Logitech gaming software program. So with a Logitech keyboard, your Logitech speakers, a Logitech headset, Logitech mouse, you can get all your RGB all synced up uh, and blind your your neighbors and your roommates. Uh, and also, I've been told this this assures better performance during games. It's it's like adding stripes to your car. It makes it faster. This makes you better. Um, so the speakers, the G560, are going to be $299, or sorry, $199, $200. And uh, they'll be available soon. They're available for pre-order right now on Logitech's website. And the G515, G513 keyboard will be $150 when that launches uh, next month. All right. Moving on to another SSD here, we've got the PNY CS900, uh, which is their budget SSD line. Um, this is a new capacity for them. They previously uh, topped out at, uh, what was it, 480, I believe. So they've, they've basically doubled uh, their uh, the capacity of this line. And uh, it's, a, you know, it's a standard, it's a SATA-based SSD, 7 millimeters, um, 3D TLC NAND, uh, the thing here is is that it works out to about twenty four cents a gig on that uh, nine sixty model, at least based on Amazon's current pricing. So, price is is the the big factor here. It's that's what uh, sets it sets it apart. Uh, we don't have any uh, in person testing on this. Um, just relying on the manufacturer's specs for for performance. Um, but a a nice cheap option. We keep driving that price per gig lower. You guys have any any thoughts on PNY or on this drive? It looks like carbon fiber. It mm. does look like. I will stress, looks like carbon fiber. Looks like. You know, PNY makes good stuff. They're usually priced where they should be. Sometimes a little higher in MSRP, but otherwise, they make good stuff. I've, I've, and hey, who doesn't need more SSDs? Maybe Alan. Alan. Alan does not need more SSDs. Everybody else, they need more SSDs. Alan has no desk area left. It is just no. he just lives in a a stack of SSDs now. I think Alan would argue the opposite. He always requires more SSDs. Yeah, but you don't listen to an addict. <laughs> you can't let them self-diagnose. <laughs> we seem to feed his habit, so why not? Well, it keeps him compliant and and. Malleable. Exactly. Yeah. Self diagnosis. Because nobody and wants for different things. Nobody wants an out of control Allen. If you've ever seen it, you would never forget it. He's 125 pounds of Tasmanian devil. Pure fury. Yes. Orange crush fueled. Yes. Yes. Well, I keep buying uh, Sun Kiss. I don't think he likes that. I thought they were interchangeable, but he's a crush man. All right. Uh, so this was an interesting, uh, interesting story. Um, no, it wasn't. Well, it's interesting in that it's priced. The story sucks. Okay. <laughs> Who wrote it? Ken Anderson, right? Yes, of course. Yeah, it sucks. Okay. Well, um, Ken's crappy story uh, is the HTC Vive Pro. So we knew that the Pro was coming and everything, but they announced the availability and pricing, and it's not great. It's... $800 for just the headset. 
That doesn't include the controllers, doesn't include the uh, lighthouse uh, uh, sensors. And this right now, because of that, and Vive has, has said this pretty clear, this is not meant for someone who waited the first generation. This is an upsell or an upgrade to current Vive owners because you need the, those uh, accessories and they don't come separately, at least not officially. You'd have to like go through eBay or something. Um, so you're looking at $800 just for the headset. And the headset's better. You know, it's got the higher resolution. It's got the uh, the uh, audio built in. It's got the wider, um, what do they call it, the, the area you can walk around in. Um, so there's definitely improvements here. But, man, $800 to existing customers. Um, what do you guys think about that? That seems a it's bit cheaper. pricey. It's cheaper than a GPU. I'll give it that. But <laughs> yeah, that's not a good thing. Yeah, people are laughing at the uh, at the price, and <clears throat> here's the problem: um, VR has not reached an area where people really want to go out and buy it. Yeah. Sure, you can get the uh, Samsung things for the, your phones, and people pass that around, and it's kind of a novelty. But until we get, you know, some real serious killer apps or some really super popular games that use VR, it's going to be kind of a sideshow for a while. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's exciting. It would be really cool. I'd love to have a Vive or an Oculus, but I'm poor. I need to sell some of the crap in my room and get one. Josh, you're, you're, you're rich. You're rich in friendship. Doesn't pay the bills. You haven't tried yet. You got to mail some of your friends, do you? That's true. I could start a Patreon. Hey, friends. There we go. <laughs> go fund me. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Uh, but you know what? <clears throat> it's it's a good advancement, and that's what we need in here, so that people will actually develop stuff that won't look like crap. That that people won't say, "Hey, I get dizzy from this," or "Hey, I've got a screen." door effect on this and it's really kind of annoying you got all the things in in one package and even though it's a little pricey it's all kind of there and it, it solves a lot of problems so uh because of the two cameras that can do some ar stuff as well if people program it for it <laughs> yep we'll see hopefully keep your fingers crossed because it's exciting i mean i remember watching lawnmower band back in 1992 oh yeah Oh, yeah, they put on those goggles, and they had a whole new world, and they had cyber sex, and uh, never mind. <clears throat> they were a simpler Stormy time. Stormy Daniels? What? Yeah. I don't okay. know. I think the next ones are the more interesting ones, what Toby and Qualcomm are doing. Yeah, let's jump into that. Uh, wait, wait, I, foveated rendering is something that could really, really help kick VR off because now it knows where you're looking with your eyes as opposed to doing the head turn thing, which... And playing with the Oculus Rift, you know it's just not quite right. So what they're talking about with this new one, and uh, Toby's been doing eye tracking for well over a decade, probably closer to two of them. Uh, they've sort of worked together with Qualcomm to get this new uh, prototype, the 845 Mobile VR reference platform, to properly be able to know what you're looking at, skip rendering shite that you're not looking at, and give you the hand-eye coordination that seems, at least for me, to be missing from uh, the Oculus that I played with. Because it, it doesn't really track with some the same way. From what they're talking with this, it really does sound uh, like with Slam and the, the what they're calling their Six Degrees of Freedom. It just sounds really damn interesting. As long as it's not $845 after the uh, name of the processor. Right. Yeah, and this also, the, the, so the 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 uh, Toby stuff. I mean, it really works. We reviewed a Toby monitor, a gaming monitor, earlier. Actually, I guess it was last year, so late last year. Um, there, I, I mean, the eye tracking tech works astonishingly well. Um, there's a couple situations where it it gets defeated by lighting or the angle of your face or whatever, mm. but um, using it on on one of the displays that they had paired with, I think it was an Acer display. Um, it, I mean, you, you, it's it's kind of shocking how quick and responsive and accurately it it can track uh, when with optimal conditions. And I imagine putting it right on your face 
they're able to really optimize the placement of their sensors so that it'll always work very well because they they know where your eyeballs are going to be. Mm -hmm. So pretty cool there. Hey, Josh, you got anything on this? I know where my eyeballs are. Do you? Yeah, I had to Google Stormy Daniels. Oh. Mm. My eyes yeah. are up here. Mm. My <laughs> eyes are up here. Mm. Yes, they are. What's happening? What's happening to this world? Okay. Um, moving on to... Uh, what are we talking about here? Next story up is there the is. Uh, rendering you, stuff. You move things around. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, yes. Ray tracing in DirectX for consumers. How about that? Huzzah. Indeed. So, uh, Josh, you, any, you want to take this the lead on this one? <sighs> Let me clear my throat. Okay. Hem, hem, hem. <laughs> Or I saved you all by muting that because it was horrific. Still getting over it a little bit of a flu. Had some beer. Some other things. But yeah, Microsoft has announced a ray tracing extension for DirectX 12. DirectX ray tracing. DXR. How do you like that TLA? Three-letter acronym. Anyway. Um... Ray tracing is well known. It was one of the first kind of 3D graphics thing, but it was incredibly computational, computationally intensive. And there's a reason why we haven't seen real time ray tracing because it looks bad as compared to modern rasterizing with shading. So, what? Oh, come uh, on. I don't mind my half a frame a second. It's pretty. What's that? I don't mind my half a frame a second. Yeah, exactly. It looks bad. Well, it's just the, the, the rate is, is slow. But now we're getting yeah. into the amount of, of GPU power and software development where they're able to leverage not only some tricks from rasterization, but also in real-time ray tracing to help with things like shadows and reflections and some other effects in there to give you a pretty fast and good looking output. It's not quite, you know, modern movie magic, but it's something that you could say, hey, I could see this happening in 2005 as a standalone, or maybe even 2010 as, uh, you know, something that, uh, you know, Pixar, whoever did. Uh, the quality of the lighting, quality of the shadows, quality of of just the effects, and it's doing it in real time. So there are a couple of videos out there, and one in particular of the uh, Stormtroopers. It was done on, I believe, four NVIDIA V100 mm -hmm. cards, and it looks, it looks great. I mean, just the quality is fantastic. And it moves good. I mean, you can tell that it's not real because they use kind of more cartoony characters and a couple of different effects in that way. But, boy, it looks great. It looks good. And this is something that we've needed for a while because as GPUs have grown much more advanced, much more powerful, you can do different things in how they use that math to project onto a screen. And this is one area. It's not true ray tracing. It's it's a combination of multiple things, but it does have a ray tracing basis in the areas that are most important. So it's really exciting to see. Uh, it's something that in, you know, maybe maybe a couple of years, three to four years, we'll actually see implemented fully in a game. In two years, we well, might actually see a partial implementation say someone does some shadows in ray tracing so you don't have to worry about you know soft edges and other stuff because that's all kind of taken care of uh, with this ray tracing algorithm that's done on your gpu and in two years we're going to have faster graphics parts so it's it's going to be interesting to see it's a good foundation and it's something they can build on from here on out to give us better graphics throughout the years so 
This is exciting. It's something that we've been waiting for a while. Since we've heard about programmable GPUs back in the early 2000s, we've always kind of wondered, can you implement ray tracing on something that is just floating point intensive, uh, something that can just grind through this stuff? Can you get the software up there that can really utilize this floating point potential? And now we're at kind of that point and we're seeing the results and it's it's really neat and exciting if you like 3D graphics. And they got customers. Uh, Frostbite, 3D Mark, Unreal Engine 4, and Unity already say they can support it uh, programmatically. I Hardware-wise, yeah, we might be, as you say, a generation two off. Unless you like going out and buying 30, what are they, 3500 bucks now, the Titan Vs? 3000 Well, oh, okay. US dollars. Oh, cheap, then. Yeah cheap but i mean speaking of that the related article that ryan posted is that nvidia has got the hardware support for it in volta uh so some people are speculating does this mean because there was some thought that volta the Art volta architecture was not going to come to the consumer brand like that that they would skip it uh or you know because of either their their performance lead or the mining craze they weren't going to refresh their cards uh until the next generation uh so does this do you think this means that there's a good chance or a better chance that volta does hit the consumer space this year? Who are you asking? Anybody. Anybody? <laughs> <The ether. laughs> I don't know. We've got something coming up in the next six months. Don't exactly know what. I guess it's Volta. Yeah, but it would, uh, it would make sense considering this announcement. You know that they're there because they they came out and specifically pointed out their support for this. Microsoft yeah, there, there have issues. been rumors. Well, you know, there, there have been honest rumors because they've stopped production on certain parts in January. And you think there's about 24 weeks um, of fabrication time from start to finish. And that's, what, six months? Yeah, about. So maybe around July, August, we'll see some kind of refresh. I know people were hoping for April, but I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah. All right, well, we'll, well CPU-wise it will, but I don't think well, yeah, CPUs CPU will be running this. We'll see a refresh in, right. in April. <laughs> there you go. Well, stay tuned. We'll but, see uh, We'll see what happens with uh, NVIDIA GPUs and, uh, and this RTX uh, for GameWorks stuff. Ryzen 2000, now with ray tracing. Right. It'd be nice. <laughs> it would be nice. <laughs> um, well, it depends on the Vega attached to it. I get, yeah. It's supposed to do ray tracing. Sure. Yeah. All right. Uh, next up, uh, another interesting technology being implemented into the APIs, uh, Microsoft and their Windows Machine Learning or WinML API. Um, so they announced it a couple weeks ago, but the news this week out of GDC is that it's going to be used for gaming. Um, so uh, what do you guys think about this? I'm sorry, Dave. I can't do that. Yeah, well, uh, I, I, ideally or initially it's going to be uh, focused on things like physics, uh, simulations, you know, what, how are gamers interacting with, with the physics simulations and how is the engine interacting with the results of those simulations. Uh, but also, and what are they doing to that poor teddy bear? Yeah, well, well better not to ask. Uh, and then also uh, they'll, they'll use it in actual in-game AI, thing, you know, helping to program uh, better responses for AI uh AI characters, AI players in games. Uh, and by being a Microsoft API, uh, you know, this is, you know, poised to be very, very easy to implement for developers. Is Derek Smart still alive? Yes. He, he could actually finally have the game where all objects have their own AI. Uh, potentially. Uh, you may not remember the Battleship series. Oh, I, oh, oh. <laughs> I, I do. And I remember Derek Smart at wow, the beginning of the that? Internet era through about 2007. Yep. But you know what? You got to give the dude credit. He oh, calmed oh, yeah. down. I played the games. I loved and them. He's, what's that? I played the games and I loved them as horrible as they were to you. Yeah. And he was a smart man. But oh, yeah, oh, yeah there are people. And you know what? He has now become kind of the elder statesman. Of, of of software guys 
And so when you see him, it's just not an instant flame war. He's actually saying things that make sense. Did he have like I an mean, iron bar shot through his head or something to change his personality? No, no. I think it was just the amount of flaming that he got for about a decade. Well, he gave as well as he got. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, eventually uh, it's got to affect you. You stare into the abyss long enough. <laughs> <laughs> Which 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 game was it that shipped, like oh they were all broken in some endearing way, but which one was like completely unfinished? E. T. No, the battleship, <laughs> the battleship games. Battle Cruiser two thousand. Yeah, Battle Cruiser, not Battleship. Right, right. Battle Cruiser was it? But there was one that was like he said to the developer, hey, "We need like another year," and they said no, and then just shipped it. I can't remember. It was like legitimately completely broken out of the box, as as I recall. But it might have been like the, the, the the well, whatever. Look it up. It's an interesting, interesting story behind those games. All right. Uh, speaking of product releases, as Jeremy suggested, uh, new stuff's coming. Oh, there it is. It's with an arm's reach. Strong work. You guys are very good with the. Uh, let me see what I have under the desk. Uh, shtick. I believe that was the one. All right. Um, so yes, uh, new, new, new hardware this, uh, or next month, not GPUs, but, uh, CPUs from AMD and Intel. Uh, things are heating up there. Um, Digitimes, uh, has some, uh, naming conventions for the Zen two, uh, stuff. So we got Z or Ryzen 2000, um, and the Intel uh, Coffee Lake refresh coming up next month. Um, expected. I think both were, were expected. No surprises here. So, so did we drop? Did we drop the Zen Plus refresh? Is it going straight to Zen Two now? Uh, I think Zen Plus was a naming thing, wasn't it? I, I don't know. I, I, it keeps coming up in rumors, but now it seems we're going straight to Zen Two, which I'm okay with. But or I might have misspoke there. It's not Zen Two. It's Ryzen two thousand. Oh, it's right there on yeah. the the yeah. chart right there now. Yeah, it's it's Zen Plus. It's they consider it's the fourteen nanometer plus stuff. Is okay. So there it is. Zen yeah, it's plus, Zen. and that's what's coming out. Seven nanometer Zen Two next year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah that chart. Zen misleading. Three. Who the hell knows? Twenty twenty apparently. But you see how they fudge that timeline. Yeah. They don't have any real definition to it. I hate it. <laughs> but hey, at least 14 nanometers Zen came out in 2017. Huzzah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, is there anything else, uh, anything in, in particular about the Intel side of things you guys uh, have thoughts on? Boy, they're kind of a mess, but they have so much engineering talent. Well, like I said, and that, it, 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 it'll be Coffee Lake, not, not Cannon broken. Lake, and that's what we're hoping for. Yeah. Well, so like I said, expect you know these, no, no big news here. These were expected uh, this around this time frame. So check back next month. I'm sure we'll get review samples in of all those products, and uh, Ryan and Ken, mostly Ken, will get to work on reviewing those uh, for you. All right. Uh, uh, second to last uh, news story here regarding the uh, that sort of real weird security mess that AMD went through uh, last week. CTS Labs. Yeah, the, uh, the uh, stock manipulator slash security researchers. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, AMD, surprised, you know, Ryan wrote this up and, and you know, he says, it's, AMD should get a lot of credit here. They had these issues that came up these allegedly very serious security vulnerabilities dropped uh, in their lap less than 24 hours before this group went public. Again, because this group was clearly behind stock manipulation or, or corporate sabotage or whatever you want to call it, they didn't have uh, altruistic motives. Uh, so AMD got this thrown at them you know, very, very quickly and had very, very little time to respond. And there were very already coming forward with a timetable for um, 
fixing these these vulnerabilities. So we don't have all the details yet, but Mark Papermaster uh, was quoted saying uh, in a blog that they, they, they've got they've got a handle on what the issues are, and the patches will be coming uh, shortly. And it shouldn't be too bad to fix as long as they you know understand the issues with the secure OS that they're using and the stuff they they kind of stacked up upon it. The only one that they really can't fix is Chimera. And that's, uh, you know, some back doors that have potentially been exposed by as media on the chipset. But um, in terms of everything else, well, I guess the mitigating patch is really suit BIOS update. No performance impact. Well, never mind. Chimera is, is going to be covered as well. I'm an idiot. Yeah, well, and Chimera is also one where you've already infected the system with something and got uh, elevated access. Then you can play with the memory. Yeah. But yeah, anyway, I mean, all of these, all of these like, things you cannot get to without having administrative access in the first place. And if you've got administrative access, yeah, your it's install is screwed. I mean, people can install rootkits and whatever that... You know, you're not going to get rid of unless you do some real serious digging. But uh, this does mitigate the issues that uh, CTS Labs found. And so, you know, it's it's not as big of a deal as you would think, but it's still potentially something that they could patch up and fix and do better on. So it's a good thing. Yeah, always, always good to uh, get this stuff out there publicly. And you, you've got a question about this very topic coming up on the mailbag, Josh. Uh, no. Oh yeah. Uh, it's no. A, <laughs> just, just okay. Just, just do it. Um, but yeah, it's the question is is the Paul? You know what? What should be the norm? You know what kind of advanced information should the the manufacturer get before it gets sent out in the wild? And you know we had was it six months for a Spectre and Meltdown? You know most uh, of them. Yeah, the so. security company figures it out. They notify the company, they give the company six months to do a public disclosure, and if they haven't after that six months, it's like, all right, well, someone's got to tell people, and they do it. Yeah. I see no issue with that timeline whatsoever, even if it is, uh, and as we're about to jump into, something you can't fix, but you can acknowledge and say, yeah, we're working on it. And that's a good segue, because uh, Intel could not, they they could mitigate and they could work around some of the issues of Spectre and Meltdown, but they couldn't fix them uh, completely. But they will be going forward with the 2018 processors, uh, based on a statement they made uh, this week. So, uh, yep. So the new stuff coming out, they they were able to get in and change the uh, change things early enough uh, in the product development uh, cycle, and and hopefully these won't be an issue going forward for for new Intel processors. Cannon Lake, uh, they're going to put uh, a block between the user space and the machine space. So in theory, coming in as a user, you no longer have the ability to look at the prediction tables and, you know, sort of read the RAM. We'll see how well it works. Yeah. Well, d- doesn't AMD have these checks already in place in their current architecture, which is why they were not vulnerable to it? The, the, the speculative prefetch actually would check the the permissions level of the process calling it, didn't it? Supposedly. Yeah, I mean, there's there's no real... I mean, there's a slight performance delta, but... Yeah, they didn't get hit nearly as hard as Intel because of just the their front end and uh, how they handle speculative. All right. Well, we'll keep an eye on how that develops. Um, now I just need one second to pull up our one, picks of the week. Two, three. That's the wrong show. Four, five, six, six seven, eight, 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 eleven, twelve. Didn't did 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 didn't did 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 didn't did do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, okay that's enough. Shut up. All right. Uh, I got oh, it. we can kill time. We can kill well, time. <laughs> kill time like the wind. Okay, so let's uh let's dive into our picks of the week. Uh Jeremy, you're up. 
Ah, uh, yeah, sure. Put me on the spot. So many months ago, you probably heard about uh, Al's love of abduction, the guys who uh, created Mist way back in the mists of time. Mm-hmm. It's up there on uh, the Humble Bundle this week with a couple of other interesting games. If you wait uh, five, six days, you'll get an extra one. But for 15 bucks, you can get Abduction, uh, another nine games, and support PC Perspective because we are a partner of Humble Bundle as well. No as way. is uh, Water, the, the charity that you know gives people water, which you need. So they, like they just so, walk around with a hose and just just spray them down. Spray them down. Okay. Yeah. You get to drink from the fire hose. Do you know that I don't need to buy another new game for another four years because Neither the way do I'm I, playing them. Well, it is awesome mm. to see these bundles. A lot of, I mean, sometimes they just don't they don't have the right mix of games, but usually you get a pretty good selection of games for. For not a lot of money, and like uh, uh, Jeremy said, you can you know, part of your purchase goes to, to, towards the charity. So that is awesome. And Abduction is a cool game. So yeah, check that out. Um, and just make sure to use our link, though, because if you use our link, uh, we get credit. Doesn't cost you anything extra. So thank you very nope. much uh, for for that. Uh, Josh, what do you got for me. us? So I had to get some headphones to my child for his birthday because he's like 16 now. And I don't know how that happened. Are you kidding me? It was only only yesterday. He was six and we brought him back home from China. Hell yeah. Now he's 16. How the hell did that happen? I I don't know. But he has needs. He has wants. And good audio is one of them. Oh, thank God. I thought you were talking about something else. What? He is 16. <clears throat> yeah, um, we're not going there. <laughs> anyway, G thirty six thirty three Artemis Spectrum. Got them. They're wired, rechargeable. They're nicely implemented. Well, no, they're not rechargeable. I'm sorry. They're they're wired in two ways. One, you've got the analog that'll give you like surround sound. And then you've got the USB connection, which will do the full 5.1 or 7.1, whichever they decide to try to fool you with. Uh, My child uses the USB, so he doesn't have any kind of uh, sound card enabled there. Uh, But it is a good sounding pair of headphones for less than 100 bucks. They seem pretty durable. They've got RGB. Which makes him happy because he likes lighting and crap. Because he's, you know, he's he's sixteen. You can turn it off if you want, but they're comfortable. They've got good sound. Uh, Sebastian reviewed these, and they came out uh, pretty well. And again, it's it's ninety six bucks, hundred under one hundred. They're they're a nice set of headphones to have. It looks like the headset uh, or the microphone is detachable. No, it just folds into itself. Oh, it just itself. folds. Okay. Oh, okay. It's actually a better design than a detachable one. Sometimes get upset after that 30th mm-hmm. time you plug them in and out. No, it's, it's, it's good. And plus, they've got all the little controls. If you're doing by USB, you have all the controls on the back side that you mm-hmm. can uh, apply to whatever you know function you want. And plus the volume, so it's it's handy, it works well. You just got to kind of memorize which which buttons are which, and you're good to go. They're comfortable, good sound, awesome. All right, and uh, for me, uh, I'm picking uh, obviously no, nothing new here, but it's uh, it's Microsoft Game Pass or Xbox Game Pass. Um, this has been out for uh, quite a while now. It's their monthly subscription for Xbox games. But what I didn't appreciate it about appreciate about when I first heard about it was that with Play Anywhere, any Play Anywhere games and, and Play Anywhere is the feature where Microsoft lets you play certain games on both the console and the PC. So any Play Anywhere games that are in Game Pass, you get on your PC right through the Windows Store. So that kind of stinks because you got to go through Windows Store. But but still, uh, so. I logged into my Windows store one day because I don't use it. And in my available apps list were all these games, uh, mostly first-party stuff. Uh, but speaking of first-party, Microsoft is now 
doing day and date releases for their first party games um, in Game Pass. So Sea of Thieves just came out, and I'm in, I haven't played it yet. I haven't had a chance to play it yet on my PC. But uh, right before the show started, I, I started downloading it through the Windows Store for the Pac you Man. Know, Pac Man. Oh yes, Pac Man. Uh, X Plus. DX Plus. So, uh, so Sea of Thieves is out now. You got State of Decay coming up. I love the first uh, State of Decay game. So the second one will be available. Crackdown Three, which is probably going to be a disaster, but I'm looking forward to seeing it. Um, all those are available. You, you pay the ten bucks a month, and you get them on PC and on your console, as well as all the console exclusive uh, Xbox One and Xbox 360 games. Wow. So it's it's pretty good. I mean, they want you to, you know, just subscribe and forget about it, and just pay them 120 dollars a year. Uh, and if you buy a lot of games, that works out pretty well. Uh, but if you're, a, I'm, I'm a single player gamer primarily um, because I nobody will play games with me. But um, with that, there's no there's no terms or contracts or subscription cancellations or anything. So you can you can subscribe for ten dollars, play Sea of Thieves, see if you like it, or play Crackdown when it comes out, and then cancel. And then you've you've played the full game for ten dollars, and then the next game comes out that you're interested in, you subscribe. Play it, cancel. So uh, if you're into, you know, you don't mind oh. managing it that way. It's a great. I mean, I think it's a great system. And Microsoft had to do it. They were so far behind in their console gener in their in their console uh, performance this generation uh, in terms of market share. They had to do something. But right now, a program like this really sets the console apart, and you get the stuff on your PC. So uh, if you haven't looked at it, check it out at least to try out Sea of Thieves. It's super fun, and you can play it on your PC, so you don't have to. You have to be a console peasant or whatever. The you, label do you is. play World of Warships? No, I, I don't. Okay, well, if if you ever wanted to play, okay, you can join me. All right, bye bye. I'm I'm super excited. In the navy, oh. you'll sail the seven seas. All right, well, guys, Village people, that's the show, and I really want to send a special thank you to those who stuck with it. When they turned their stream, you know, their their stream on, or started playing this podcast, and you saw the three of us, and you stuck with it, gold star, gold star for you. Thank you so much. You know, some people just like to watch a train wreck. They do, they do, but you know, we'll take it. And there's the masochist crowd; they're we, big with us. The, the, well, I mean, that's already sort of like the baseline, though. So this is like yeah. a step beyond that. Uh, but uh, thank you guys for, for hanging with us. Uh, we, the regular crew, most of them should be back next week. Um, like I said, join us every Wednesday night, uh, 10 p.m. Eastern, uh, here at pcpur.com slash live. Sign up for the mailing list at pcpur.com slash subscribe so you know when we're going to go live. And uh, I guess, what else am I missing, Alex? What else does Ryan usually say at the end of the show? See you next week. Oh, okay. That's yeah. it. Goodbye. Uh, other people will see you next week. That's all, folks. See you guys. Thanks. Thanks to RX Bar for supporting the PC Perspective podcast. RX Bar is a whole food protein bar with no BS. Get 25% off your first order at rxbar.com slash pcper and use the promo code pcper. That's rxbar.com slash pcper, promo code pcper.